Chapter 1791, Fiamung Gring, Chen Zinji replied, The Tang sectors always had the most advanced soul technology in the Federation, so I think that's a good idea. Wu Guanzi also nodded in agreement. By the time Ling Zichen was brought to the control center by Tang Wulin, all of the preparatory work was already underway. Everyone else had continued in the discussion, and upon witnessing Tang Wulin's return, Wu Guanzi cut straight to the chase. This is the plan. We're going to launch another batch of ninth grade soul missiles to shake the Blood River God Slayer array and also use the power of the explosions to disguise Eternal Heaven's aura. Eternal Heaven will be launched slightly after the ninth grade soul missiles, and it'll be detonated right as the explosions of the ninth grade soul missiles reach peak power. Tang Wulin was just about to reply when Ling Zichen said, That won't work. Everyone present immediately directed their attention toward her. In reality, Wu Guanzi wasn't taking Ling Zichen very seriously. She was far too young, and even though she was already close to 30 years of age, she only to be in her early 20s. As such, he was rather displeased to hear such a blunt interjection from her, and his brows furrowed slightly as he asked, May I ask who this is? Tang Wuling replied, This is the head researcher of our Tang Sect Soul Weapon Research Institute, Madame Ling Zichen. Ling Zichen rolled her eyes at him in a display of exasperation. Madam, I ask. Just call me head researcher Ling. Wu Guanzi faltered slightly upon hearing this before asking, What do you suggest then? Head researcher Ling. Ling Zichen made her way over to the table and said, Your plan is completely useless. Do you really think the aura of eternal heaven can be concealed by other soul weapons? What a load of horse dung. What do you take eternal heaven for? Wu Guanzi raised an eyebrow upon hearing this. Never had anyone spoken to him in such an impolite manner. Not even Dong Zian. Cao Dajia aimed a stern glance at Ling Zichen and scolded, Zichen, don't be rude. Ling Zichen harumphed, I'm just stating the facts. I'm the only one here who truly understands the power of eternal heaven. There's no need to do any preparatory work. Once eternal heaven locks onto a target, nothing will be able to stand in its way. To put it in simple terms, eternal heaven is capable of destroying the entire core circle of the northernmost region. There's no way that Blood River God Slayer array will be able to withstand its power. Everyone was astonished to hear this. The core circle of the region was a massive area that took up far more land than the past Shrek City had. Could a single missile really destroy such an enormous area? Ling Zichen continued, don't believe me. Put it this way, multiply the power of the two other Godslayer missiles combined by three and you'll get roughly the power output of Eternal Heaven. So there's no need to worry about the Blood River Godslayer array withstanding its explosion. What you do have to worry about is whether the explosion will cause a shift in the tectonic plates. If you destroy the ice shells in the core circle, sea levels will rise so significantly that the entire continent will be inundated. What? Everyone present was astonished to hear this, and never did they think that Ling Zichen would raise such an issue to them. Ling Zichen continued, The ice shells in the northernmost region contain over 80% of all of the fresh water on the entire Duloy Star, and according to my calculations, the heat produced by Eternal Heaven's explosion will be enough to melt at least a third of those ice shelves. As a result, sea levels will rise significantly, causing tsunamis all over the entire continent, as well as the Stardo continent and those spirit continent. The damage caused will be immeasurable, so it's absolutely idiotic to use Eternal Heaven directly. That thing isn't a weapon, it's a disaster in a metal shell. Tang Wuling drew a sharp breath upon hearing this, and everyone was rooted to the spot. Wu Guanzi asked, But how will we break that Blood River God Slayer array if we don't use Eternal Heaven? Ling Zichen replied, That's where technology comes in. It's not that Eternal Heaven can't be used, it's just a matter of how it's used. I highly suggest only using a portion of its power and restricting that power to a certain area. You're the objective is only to break the array, right? Tang Wuling asked, Can you elaborate on that? Zichen, how can we restrict the power of Eternal Heaven to a certain area? We have to disassemble it. Ling Zichen replied in a nonchalant manner. Everyone's jaws immediately dropped to the ground. Disassemble it. Ling Zichen smiled and confirmed, That's right. Eternal Heaven is comprised of many source positive circulation cores, and if we can transform it from a missile into a super weapon, we'll be able to use it multiple times. I don't know exactly how many times we'll be able to use it, but at the very least, we'll be able to better control its power so that it won't set off a massive explosion that will threaten the entire continent. Cow Dutch's eyes immediately lit up upon hearing this. If Eternal Heaven could be transformed into a super weapon that could be used multiple times, then the Tang Sect and Shrek Academy would still be able to retain it after this battle. How confident are you that this will work? Tang Wuling asked. Ling Zichen replied, about 80% confident. Having said that, if things don't go as planned, the missile will explode, so you'll have to mentally prepare for that. Tang Wuling and Cao Dajia were quite familiar with Ling Zichen, so they weren't all that surprised to hear this, but Uguanzi and Chen Zinji both felt as if their blood pressure was spiking through the roof. How could she be talking about this so nonchalantly? Had she not just mentioned the repercussions if the missile were to explode? Ling Zichen shrugged and said, That's why I suggest you take me to the other side of that array. If I fail in my modification, the missile will explode, and it'll be enough to destroy the array. Uguanzi and Chen Zinji exchanged a quiet glance upon hearing this, and the latter asked, If the explosion does cause sea levels to rise, how severe would the repercussions be? Ling Zichen replied, I don't know. Places at high altitudes should be fine, but the rest will most likely be inundated. You should probably notify the Federation in advance and evacuate all low-lying areas. Uguanzi was developing a throbbing headache. Notify the Federation. If only it were that easy. If the general public could hear the truth, everyone would fly into a panic. Both he and Chen Zinji had thought that they would simply be able to directly use Eternal Heaven. Neither of them anticipated that there would be so many problems. If they went in the northernmost region with all those ice shelves, the problem of sea level rising wouldn't exist. But what were they supposed to do here? Ling Zichen added, "Don't think that you'd be able to use this missile elsewhere. Eternal Heaven is powerful enough to wipe out all life in any place, and the affected area would definitely be beyond your imagination. On top of that, more damage will be done even after the explosion, and it's not impossible for the explosion to cause tectonic shifts. For example, if you were to throw the missile into a volcano, then unimaginably fearsome disasters would most likely follow, and it wouldn't be much different from Armageddon. As such, it's actually the best case scenario that we're in the northernmost region, where barely anyone resides. That's all I have to say. You have to make the decision as quickly as possible. Do you want me to modify Eternal Heaven, or do you want to try something else? Is there no other way? Tang Wuling asked. Chapter 1792. Modifying Eternal Heaven. Ling Zichen shrugged in response. There are other alternatives. However, if you want to set off Eternal Heaven directly, then there's only one way to minimize the damage it will do to our continent, and that's to throw it deep into the abyssal passageway prior to detonation. In that case, the explosion won't even take place on our continent, so it naturally won't affect our side. Tang Wuling's heart stirred slightly upon hearing this. This didn't seem to be all that implausible. After all, the Blood God Legion was guarding another abyssal passageway. However, the thought was dashed from his mind almost as soon as it appeared. Even if they were to bomb the abyssal plane itself, that wouldn't resolve the threat of the Blood River God Slayer array. Furthermore, none of them knew exactly how the abyssal plane operated. What if the explosion couldn't truly harm the abyssal plane at all? In addition, unless he accompanied the missile, even if the explosion would kill a huge number of abyssal creatures, there would be no one around to devour the abyssal energy. So all the killed abyssal creatures would eventually be resurrected, leaving nothing to show for their efforts. After considering the situation, Chen Zinji quickly arrived at a decision. Wanzi, report our situation to the Federation immediately. Head researcher Ling, please prepare to make the modifications. Ling Zichen nodded in response. How long would the modifications take to complete? Wu Guanzi asked. Ling Zichen replied, at least two days, and I require Tang Wuling's assistance. With his help, both the success rate and rate of progress will be higher. No way. The three limit duos blurted out almost
medals, but the medal is still of a far lower quality than what Willing is able to forge. On top of that, new parts are required for the modifications, and that won't be possible without a divine blacksmith. Cow Dudger suggested, then you can get Willing to forge whatever parts you require here according to your specifications. Ling Zichin pouted in response. I knew you cared more about him than me. Why aren't you concerned about my safety? Cow Dudger sighed. Of course I care about you. I watch you grow up, and in my heart, you're different from a daughter to me. However, Willing is different. He is the future of the Tang Sect and Shrek Academy. He won't be accompanying you, but both old man Zhang and I will be present, and we'll do everything in our power to save you if something goes wrong. If we can't get away, then we'll just have to stay with you until the bitter end. Cow Dudger was speaking in a very nonchalant manner, but both Chen Zinji and Guanzi were struck by a sense of respect and admiration toward him. This was the spirit of the Tang Sect. Old man Cow, this may be our final battle together, but I'm proud to have a comrade like you. Wu Guanzi said with a serious expression. Cow Dudger smiled and replied, "Don't get all mushy on me. I'm doing this for the Tang Sect, not for you. If the modification of Eternal Heaven is successful, it will remain a weapon of our Tang Sect, and it won't have anything to do with you. Anyway, that's enough talk. Go and inform the Federation of the current situation. In the meantime, we'll begin our preparatory work. We'll have to count on you to keep the enemies at bay. Two days isn't a long time, but it's definitely not a short time either. Thus, Tang Wulin, Cow Dudger, and Ling Zichen returned to the barracks for Shrek Academy and the Tang Sect. Upon their return, Cow Dudger turned to Ling Zichen with a stern expression and said, "All right, tell me what the success rate actually is." Ling Zichen put on a cheeky smile and replied, "What do you mean? Didn't I already say what the success rate was back there?" Cow Dudger harumphed, "Don't try that on me. I know you better than anyone else. This is not a laughing matter. So tell me the truth." Ling Zichen stuck out her tongue in a sheepish manner, then replied, "There's actually no risk with the modification process, but there will be some risk with the usage of the super weapon as no one knows how powerful the weapon will be. On top of that, I'm the only one capable of using it as no one else truly understands the unique properties of source positive circulation cores." Cow Dudger gently flicked her on the forehead in a gesture of exasperation. "What if something goes wrong during the modification process? Will Eternal Heaven be affected?" Ling Zichen replied, "No." Eternal Heaven isn't that easy to modify. I'm merely changing its method of power output, which isn't actually difficult. What's more troublesome is the material of the missile. So Willing's assistance really is required. Only forging will ensure that Eternal Heaven will still retain sufficient power even after the modifications are done. Even after the modifications are complete, Eternal Heaven can still be used as a soul missile at any time. But a price will have to be paid to use it in such a manner. What's the price? Cow Dudger asked. Ling Zichin replied, "There's no need for you to know that. I can tell you that it's something that I can bear." All right, then commence the modification process as soon as we get back. Time is of the essence. Cow Dudger said. Ling Zichin had made the modification process sound so dangerous when speaking with Chen Zinji and Uguanzi, and she was thinking for the sake of the Tang Sect. Not only was the Tang Sect handing over Eternal Heaven, there was some risk involved as well. So even though Ling Zichin hadn't explicitly asked for compensation, the implications were quite clear. She had never given up on her research into source-positive circulation cores, but this research required a huge amount of uncommon metals. She had always been of the opinion that if she could succeed in this area of research, then source-positive circulation cores would be able to replace soul power as a brand new energy source. Furthermore, this technology was also a major hurdle standing in the path of further breakthroughs in soul technology. Why was it that humans were still unable to successfully create a spaceship that could facilitate space exploration? The root problem was a lack of energy. Soul Masters could inject their soul power into the spaceship as an energy source, but the energy of Soul Masters was also limited. Once research and development into source positive circulation cores succeeded, the human race would have a new energy source with enormous potential. In contrast with using Soul Masters as an energy source, uncommon metals would clearly be much more reliable in outer space. The Tang Sect was already doing everything in its power to support her research, but the resources that it could provide her with were still limited. As such, it would naturally be a good thing if they could secure some uncommon metals from the Federation. Only now did Tang Wuling truly understand why Ling Zichen had made the modification process seem more dangerous than it was, and he couldn't help but shake his own head in a resigned manner. It seems that he was still too naive and innocent. However, what Ling Zichen had said about the ice shelves melting was most likely true, as that claim was very easy to verify. They really did have to be careful in their deployment of Eternal Heaven as a slight mishap could result in a massive disaster. The bombing still hadn't ceased, and all types of soul weapons, including heavy iron lasers, had been tested on the Blood River Godslayer array. Chapter 1793. Alarm. However, even the ever-reliable heavy iron lasers failed to make an impact here. High-intensity heavy iron lasers were able to pierce through the surface of the array, but due to the refractive interference from the array, the lasers were unable to strike their targets. Thus, even though the lasers were still capable of killing some abyssal creatures, it simply wasn't worth the energy being expended. At this point, the Blood River Godslayer array was virtually entirely filled with all types of abyssal creatures, and some of the abyssal creatures that were more massive in stature had other abyssal creatures piled onto their bodies. The sheer number that the abyssal army had swelled to was both astounding and very concerning. Aside from the continuous bombardment, there was relative peace on the battlefield, and this peace lasted for an entire day. At the Western Legion Control Center, we can't keep delaying like this. Could it be that Shrek Academy and the Tang Sect have gone back on their word? Dong Zian asked with a grim expression. They wouldn't do that. They're far too noble and proud to go back on a promise like this. There must be some type of problem, but they'll definitely bring out Eternal Heaven. Who would have thought that this invasion from the Abyssal Plane would be helping us here? Kayangu Dongfang said in a relaxed manner. With Eternal Heaven in the hands of the Tang Sect and Shrek Academy, the party that was under the most threat was the Spirit Pagoda. Now that Eternal Heaven was about to be used, the threat would be alleviated, and the Spirit Pagoda wouldn't have to face the Tang Sect and Shrek Academy head on. As such, the crisis that they were previously facing would be resolved. Yin Mushang interjected. It's not that simple. The Tang Sect and Shrek Academy definitely won't be willing to hand over Eternal Heaven free of charge. This delay could very well be due to the fact that they're negotiating compensation with the Federation. Dong Zian waved a dismissive hand and said, "That's not important. What's important is that we destroy that array." German Kayangu, is it true that this array is capable of creating a god? Kayangu Dongfang's expression darkened slightly as he nodded in response. That is indeed a possibility, but it's by no means an inevitability. The attainment of godhood has always been the ultimate pursuit for us limit duos, and everyone has their own direction that they're studying and working toward. The Holy Spirit cult's path is the most extreme, but it's very likely that this is the path closest to success. Of course, we don't want to see them succeed, but if they do succeed, the planar walls could very well be shattered, and all of us could attain godhood. The crumbling of the planar walls would be a disaster for normal people, but it may be an opportunity for those like us who stand at the pinnacle of humanity. Kayangu Dongfang paused here momentarily to gauge Dong Zian and Yin Moshang's reactions. Dong Zian was clearly rather tempted by the idea, but a cold look appeared on Yin Moshang's face as he said, "What are you trying to say, Chen and Don't forget that the duty of a soldier is to protect the Federation and its people." Kayangu Dongfang hurriedly waved a hand in response. "I'm not trying to say anything. This is just my analysis. I certainly hope so." Yin Moshang said. He then cast his gaze toward the goddess-like woman sitting not far away, and a hint of entrancement flashed through his eyes, but it immediately faded. Seeing as Miss Yu Yin's silver dragon spear is able to generate the same effect as the golden dragon spear, this is a great opportunity for us. However, according to the data that we collected, the energy devoured by Tang Wuling's golden dragon spear can be reciprocated to the tree of life on that mountain top. What will happen if you devour too much energy? M's. Gu Yuna. Kayangu Dongfang was given a rude reality check upon hearing
and said, You're far too kind, Chairman Kayan Yu, for the sake of the Federation and its people, we'll be sure to assist him. Do you know as much as we can in devouring more abyssal energy? Despite what he was saying, there was a clear hint of greed glowing deep within his eyes. There was an enormous amount of abyssal energy available, and after being converted into pure life energy, it would benefit anyone. Kayan Yu Dongfang had just said that all the Matuyos were seeking opportunities to attain godhood. Perhaps the injection of life energy into the myriad beast plane would be the spirit pagoda's opportunity. Dong Zian was definitely someone who was very good at grasping opportunities. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been able to climb all the way to the top with his lackluster aptitude. After providing her explanation, Yuna closed her eyes again to meditate, as if nothing in the outside world had anything to do with her. Kayan Yu Dongfang glanced at Yu Yuna and heaved an internal sigh. He was finding her more and more difficult to understand and assess. Yu Yuna was constantly unveiling more and more of her aptitude, and even he was finding her to be very mysterious. If it weren't for the fact that Kayan Yu's hunting had confirmed that physical relations had taken place between the two of them, Kayan Yu Dongfang would have to seriously doubt her loyalty. This doubt stemmed from the fact that Yu Yuna was always able to complete any task he assigned to her with flying colors. To put it in simple terms, she was simply too perfect. Furthermore, Kayan Yu Dongfang was very confused about her relationship with Tang Wuling. Even though she had severely wounded Tang Wuling during the joust for a spouse event, the dynamic between the two still left him feeling very perplexed. Now, Yu Yuna had developed to an extent that even he would have difficulty stripping away her power. It wasn't just with his support that Yu Yuna had been elevated to the position of vice chairman. The contributions to the Spirit Pagoda were clear for everyone to see. The development of 10,000-year-old soul spirits and the Myriad Beast plane had earned enormous revenue for the Spirit Pagoda, and all of the board members could clearly see that. Even Kayan Yu's hanging hadn't become a vice chairman yet, but Yu Yuna had already reached this position, and she primarily had herself to thank for this. He was even beginning to wonder whether he would be a match for this grand in Lorahis in battle. Yin Mushang rose to his feet and said, "I'm going back now. The bombing is currently primarily being overseen by the three neighbor legions, but we have to be prepared. Wu Guanzi still hasn't told us when he's going to be using Eternal Heaven, so I think it's necessary that we force his hand a little in this matter. Otherwise, we'll be in a very passive position." Dong Zian nodded in response. "Don't worry, I'll go and see him in a bit. Even if he's the commander in chief, he can't just make all the decisions and not answer to anyone." Right at this moment, a piercing alarm rang out without any warning, and everyone in the room reflexively turned their attention toward the large screen. A layer of red light flashed over the screen, and the alarm became even louder. Connect me to the control center. Dong Zian immediately commanded as he picked up his military soul communicator. Chapter 1794. Movement of the array. Soon, the image on the screen switched to one of Guanzi with a serious look on his face. This is a red alert. All troops are to prepare for battle. The Blood River God Slayer array is on the move. Everyone present immediately tensed up upon hearing this, and even Yu Yuna had risen to her feet as a fierce aura erupted out of her body. Kayan Yu Dongfang also stood up as his eyes narrowed slightly. Is it coming already? The Federation isn't going to be able to deliberate any longer. Generals, you should instruct your troops to take precautionary measures. It's said that Eternal Heaven is extremely powerful, and if our troops get too close to it, we could suffer significant casualties during its explosion. Dong Zian's brows were tightly furrowed as he replied, I understand. Indeed, the Blood River God Slayer array was on the move. It wasn't moving very quickly, but its movement was clearly discernible from the satellite images. What was even more terrifying was that not only was the Blood River God Slayer array on the move, even the Abyssal Passageway beneath it was moving alongside it. This meant that the entire Abyssal Passageway was advancing toward the human army under the protection of the Blood River God Slayer array. Sect Master Tang, are the preparations complete? Wu Guanzi's voice was full of urgency as he spoke into his soul communicator. Not yet. The modifications are still ongoing, but it looks like they should be successful. In the meantime, everyone from the Tang Sect and Shrek Academy, including myself, will assist you in stopping the advance of the Blood River God Slayer array. All right, then I'll be thanking you in advance. Wu Guanzi ended the call and took a deep breath. He knew that the key moment in the battle was about to arrive. They couldn't allow the Blood River God Slayer array to reach the human army no matter what. The Abyssal Plane was being transported by the array, and if it were to be released within the human army, a catastrophic disaster would follow. The Sea God Legion, North Sea Legion, and East Sea Legion are to maximize firepower output to delay the advancement of the Blood River God Slayer array as much as possible. In the meantime, the Central Legion, Western Legion, and Northwestern Legion are to prepare all of their heavy artillery for fire and await further orders. Boom, boom, boom. Violent explosions rang out in rapid succession in the core circle. The carpet bombing wasn't just targeting the Blood River God Slayer array, it was also targeting the path that the array had to take to reach the human army. However, this didn't seem to affect the array much at all, and it continued to slowly advance, only stopping momentarily when the explosions became particularly violent. Tang Walin and all of the powerful beings from the Tang Sect and Shrek Academy had already risen up into the air, appraising the Blood River God Slayer array in the distance with grim expressions. The problem wasn't just the array itself. What was even more concerning was that no one knew how powerful the Abyssal Army within the array had become. The sole weapons that the Federation had always had extreme confidence in were currently proving to be largely ineffective in this all important battle, and that was striking a sense of dread into the hearts of all of the human troops. Even back when the Northern Legion had faced the Abyssal Army on its own, they had at least been able to directly kill Abyssal creatures, but this Blood River God Slayer array had formed an impregnable moving fortress. The accumulation and preparations the Holy Spirit cult had made over the past several millennia were being put on full display here, and it was a direct counter to all of the Federation's weapons. Deploy all soul aircrafts of the Central Legion's first air division, and commence an indiscriminate attack with all heavy iron laser weaponry. This order was being made by Guanzi through tightly gritted teeth. Chen Zinji opened his own soul communicator, and ordered, Deploy the Sea God Legion's Seagull Division, and commence an indiscriminate attack with all heavy iron laser weaponry. It wasn't that Guanzi didn't want to deploy the air regiments of other legions. The problem was that the air regiments of other legions hadn't yet been equipped with heavy iron weaponry. Only the most powerful Army Legion and Naval Legion, the Central Legion and the Sea God Legion, respectively, had been equipped with such weapons, and even with this cutting edge weaponry, they were only just barely able to harm the abyssal creatures within the array. Furthermore, the energy of the abyssal creatures that were killed would only return to the abyss, so the effect would be minimal. But what other choice did they have? One sole aircraft after another flew through the air, bombarding the Blood River God Slayer array with heavy iron lasers from afar. High intensity heavy iron lasers were somewhat effective, and it could be clearly seen that some of the abyssal creatures within the array were exploding into great energy that surged back toward the abyssal passageway. However, there were only so many heavy iron laser weapons, and the air units didn't dare to get too close. The entire Blood River God Slayer array was advancing at a slow rate of around 10 meters per second. This didn't sound all that fast, but it would still allow the array to cover several dozens of kilometers per hour, and it would descend upon the human army in a day at most. One side was unleashing a desperate bombardment, while the other side was completely resolute and advancing steadily. It was a rather peculiar battle of attrition. Slowly, the abyssal army began to change directions in its advance, and soon, it became apparent from the satellite images that the abyssal army was advancing toward the encampment of the Western Legion and Northwestern Legion. Dong Zian was stunned to discover this, and he couldn't help but swear out loud. The orders from the main control center were to stop the advance of the Blood River God Slayer array at all costs, and the array was currently heading toward them. Where is Eternal Heaven, Commander? Where is it? Why has it not been deployed yet? Dong Zian roared in a furious voice. Upon discovering the change in the Blood River God Slayer array's trajectory, he had immediately contacted Uguanzi. Uguanzi replied, I don't know what you're talking about. Eternal
Do you know what you just said, Dong Xian? If you dare to retreat and desert the battle, I have the right to execute you. Dong Xian faltered slightly upon hearing this. He knew that Iguanzi was right, and that there was no way he could retreat at a time like this. Commander, the situation is that the Abyssal Army will be upon us in 12 more hours at most, and once that happens, fighting fire with fire will be no different from calling death. So please tell me how we can stop their advance. All of the Federation's most advanced weaponry has already been tried. Have any of them been able to break through that layer of defense? Iguanzi's brows furrowed tightly as he replied. I understand what you're feeling right now, but all we can do now is wait. I've already reported the situation to the Federation. Deploying. Eternal Heaven is not a simple matter, and it must be modified first. The Federation has already approved the modification, and it's currently underway. I don't know when it will be ready, but we can only hope that it will be complete within 12 hours. In the meantime, I'll mobilize all of our troops to help you keep the Abyssal at bay. Dong Xian took a deep breath to calm himself down, and said, Commander, let's set our personal differences aside here. I've already been a soldier for decades, and I'm not afraid to die, nor are my brothers. However, we can't just die for no reason or cause, so please get them to complete the modifications as soon as possible. After that, Dong Xian turned and departed from the screen. Chapter 1795, All That Resistance. Please cease the artillery fire for now. Tang Wuling's voice was transmitted to the main control center through the military communicator. Is everything ready on your end, Sect Master Tang? Wu Guanzi asked in a hopeful manner. Tang Wuling replied, No, but seeing as the artillery fire is almost entirely futile, I want to see if we can disrupt the Blood River Godslayer array using the power of us all masters. The Blood River Godslayer array is an extremely evil creation, so we might be able to damage it using power of the opposite nature. Wu Guanzi's heart stirred slightly upon hearing this. He had already heard about how Yali had unleashed a fearsome combination soul steel to deal the Holy Spirit called a heavy blow, thereby allowing them to force back the Abyssal Army even before the Central Legion's arrival. Indeed, if artillery fire wasn't working, perhaps it would be worth giving the Soul Masters a try. After all, there was still no weapon in this world aside from Godslayer missiles that could match the power of four-word battle armor masters, and no party had more four-word battle armor masters than Shrek Academy and the Tang Sect. All right, I'll order a temporary ceasefire. I'll be counting on you, Sect Master Tang. Wu Guanzi decided. Thus, the artillery fire began to slow, and a ceasefire ensued. Without the constant bombardment, the giant purplish black light barrier in the distance became clear for everyone to see. Tang Wuling said, All limit billyoys, follow me. Everyone else, protect the secondary tree of life in case of surprise attacks from the enemy. Golden light flashed in his hand, and the golden dragon spear appeared in his grasp as he spread open his golden dragon wings before speeding toward the distance as a streak of golden light. Beside him were Holy Spirit Duluo Yali, Light Dark Duluo Long Yeyu, Body Duluo Arahang, Titan Duluo Yuan and Zenshin, Free Sky Duluo Yuan and Tiandang, and Kilin Duluo Tongu. Meanwhile, a series of figures were also rising up from the central region. Close to twenty powerful beings from the Battle God Hall had been deployed at once, led by Guan Yue, and they were trailing Tang Wuling's group from the side. The Blood River God Slayer array was still advancing steadily onward while giving off faint purplish black light. The array was completely packed with layer upon layer of abyssal creatures, presenting a sight that made the beholders flesh crawl. A short while later, Kang Wuling and the others were already close to the Blood River God Slayer array. From such close proximity, they were more able to sense just how fearsome this heinous array was. The array itself was constantly giving off a sound that resembled sobbing, striking the listener with a sense of unease, and even limit duoys were affected on a spiritual level. Furthermore, mountains of corpses and seas of blood could be seen reflected through the purplish black, and the entire array was giving off a nauseating odor that was clearly extremely toxic. Those bastards. Yoli's fists were clenched tightly in fury. How many lives have been sacrificed to create this fearsome array? The Holy Spirit cult was an enemy to all of humanity. Tang Wuling said, I'll try attacking first. The rest will be up to you, mother. All right, be careful. Yali cautioned. The golden light radiating from Tang Wuling's eyes grew even brighter, and all of a sudden, a burst of scorching golden flames erupted from his body as he slowly raised his golden dragon spear. Bolts of rainbow tribulation lightning began to surge along the length of his golden dragon spear, and an unyielding aura that was bordering on insanity erupted out of his body. A giant golden dragon projection gradually surfaced behind him, and a figure gradually became clearer and clearer above the projection. This was a twelve-winged figure that was entirely enshrouded in crimson light, and it was this figure that was transmitting this unyielding will to Tang Wuling. In the next instant, Tang Wuling shot forth through the air like a bolt of golden lightning, restricted mediocrity, dragon emperor charge. It was this very same attack that had once taken arm from Pyangyu Dongfang. On this occasion, it wasn't enhanced by his dragon emperor fight, but it was infused with the power of elemental tribulations, and it was definitely an attack of the limit duo level. Boom. A speck of golden light erupted on the Blood River Godslayer array, and in the next instant, it spread outward as a golden halo. In the instant that the rainbow lightning came into contact with the array, a violent explosion immediately erupted. Vast expanses of rainbow lightning proliferated outward from the point of impact, sending a violent aura spreading in all directions. The piercing rainbow lightning presented a stunning sight, and even from a distance, it could be seen that the point that had been struck on the array had caved in noticeably. Furthermore, the unsettling sobbing sound grew more than twice as loud, and the entire array was stopped in its tracks by the single attack. Nice. Uguanzi couldn't help but exclaim upon seeing this through the big screen. It was also right at this moment that an angelic symphony rang out, and the sky suddenly turned a golden color as twelve archangels descended from the heavens. Yoli's entire body was enshrouded within a holy aura, and she had unleashed her most powerful combination soul skill again. Archangel's holy spirit dance. The holy aura descended from above, and the archangels were also infuriated by the sight of the Blood River Godslayer array. Pillars of holy light were directed by Yali toward the very same spot where Tang Wuling's attack had struck, and the Blood River Godslayer array trembled violently as purplish black light surged over its surface in a frenzy. The spot that was struck by the holy light instantly turned a dense black color, as if it had formed a shield to withstand the attack. At this point, the entire Blood River Godslayer array had completely stalled, and all of a sudden, a golden figure was repelled back like a cannonball. It was none other than Tang Wuling. He tumbled through the air for quite a distance before just barely steadying himself, and the point on the Blood River Godslayer array that he had just struck returned to normal again. Even his dragon emperor charge paired with the power of elemental tribulations hadn't been able to breach the array. At this point, Archangel's Holy Spirit dance had reached its climax, an incredibly rich holy powers incessantly bombarding the array in a frenzy. Finally, the Blood River God Slayer array began to display signs of strain, and it could be clearly seen that the giant light barrier had shrunk by about a third in overall area. Had they succeeded, everyone in the human army was ecstatic. If Yoli's attacks could weaken the Blood River God Slayer array, then that would buy them enough time to resist the enemy. However, Yoli's expression remained as grim as ever. Holy powers indeed the bane of evil, but the Blood River God Slayer array was an entity formed by countless interconnected ventral spirits. Each and every ventral spirit that was struck by the holy powers weakened, but they would immediately retreat to the back to recover while other ventral spirits took their place. And thus, the cycle continued. Archangel's Holy Spirit dance was able to weaken the Blood River God Slayer array, but it couldn't truly damage the array. A burst of bright purplish black light abruptly rose up from the abyssal passageway before instantly injecting itself into the Blood River God Slayer array, and the array almost instantly rebounded back to its original size. There were also streaks of purplish black erupting out of the array to strike the archangels in the sky. The streaks of light were filled with contaminating evil energy, and even the few archangels were severely affected, thereby significantly weakening archangels' holy spirit dance. Chapter 1796. Not enough. The golden light in the sky faded, and the archangels' holy spirit dance also concluded.
God Slayer array would arrive at the Western Legion's encampment by dawn the next day at the latest. Dong Xian had already inquired countless times about Eternal Heaven's modifications, but they were still incomplete. At the Western Legion Control Center, they must be doing this on purpose. Shrek Academy and the Tang Sect must be intentionally stalling for time to take advantage of this opportunity to weaken us. Dong Xian roared with fury. At this moment, Kiang Yu and many other high-ranking members of the Spirit Pagoda were also present with him in the Western Legion Control Center. A Lieutenant General said in an urgent manner, "You have to make a decision soon, Commander. That Blood River God Slayer array is definitely not something we can resist. Our brothers would be giving their lives for nothing if we don't do anything." Dong Xian's breathing was quite heavy as he replied, "Shut up. Do you think I don't know that, Chairman Kiang Yu? Do you have any ideas?" Kiang Yu Dongfang shook his head with a wry smile. "I'm afraid not." The array contains too much energy, so we don't have any way to oppose it, either. Eternal Heaven is our only hope. I truly didn't think that the Holy Spirit cult would be capable of creating such a powerful entity. The only viable option right now is to retreat. Retreat! Dong Zian's hands immediately balled up into tight fists. What did retreating entail? It entailed giving up their current encampment gut setting. Up defensive infrastructure took time, as did disassembly, and there was no time available to them, which mean that once they abandoned these defenses, there was no way that they would be able to re-establish them. Furthermore, if they were to retreat, the Abyssal Army would have a clear path further inland, allowing them to reach deeper into the continent. However, if they didn't retreat, then they would have to face the Blood River God Slayer array directly, and the consequences of that would be catastrophic for the Western Legion. We can't retreat. If we do that, we'll be traitors of the Federation, Dong Zian said as he closed his eyes with a pained expression. Kiang Yu Dongfang suggested, What if we only feign a retreat? I strongly suspect that Shrek Academy and the Tang Sector are intentionally refraining from using Eternal Heaven with the objective of allowing the Blood River God Slayer array to severely weaken us first. On top of that, the explosion of Eternal Heaven would be sure to affect us as well, thereby inflicting further damage. As such, why don't we pretend to retreat and see how the main control center reacts? Dong Zian reopened his eyes as a hesitant look appeared on his face. At the Shrek Academy and Tang Sector encampment, a group of exhausted powerful beings were seated around the secondary tree of life. They had all given everything they had to give, but were still unable to completely stop the Blood River God Slayer array. Thankfully, with the secondary tree of life present, they would be able to recover their lost energy far more quickly than normal. Tang Walin was focused on meditation, inspecting his own internal condition. In reality, if he had tried a bit he would have perhaps been able to pierce through the Blood River God Slayer array that was most likely achievable with his Golden Dragon Spear and Sea God's Trident. However, what would he do then? He would just be trapped in the array, and there would be no chance for him to escape again. The Blood River God Slayer array was like a self-regenerating rubber ball. Even if he would have pierced through it, it would simply heal itself and trap him inside. If only she were by his side, Tang Walin couldn't help but reminisce on the last time he had fought alongside Yu Yuna. The two of them were able to unleash the Dragon God transformation, and with it, they had even been able to force back the Holy Lord. Both of them were definitely far more powerful than they had been back then, and if they were to join forces again, their combined impact on this battle would be much greater. However, would she be willing to join forces with him? With that in mind, Tang Walin slowly opened his eyes and cast his gaze toward the Western Legion's encampment. In this dire situation, surely even the Spirit Pagoda wouldn't stand between them. After all, the Western Legion was about to face a full frontal assault. Right at this moment, Tang Walin suddenly rose to his feet in an alarmed manner. The mountaintop they were situated on was the tallest one in this area, so the view was good, and to his surprise, he could see that the Western Legion seemed to be preparing to move. A series of mechas rose up into the air before slowly flying back, and many cars on the ground were also beginning to swivel around. What were they doing? Were they retreating out of their encampment? There was still quite some time before the Blood River God Slayer array was projected to reach their encampment. How could they just abandon their encampment like this? Tang Walin hurriedly pulled out his soul communicator to contact the main control center. Commander, what's going on with the Western Legion? Why are they suddenly retreating? Did you authorize this retreat? Tang Walin asked in an urgent voice. Wu Guanzi seemed to be extremely furious as he replied, Of course not. How could I authorize them to abandon their encampment? Those bastards. I'm unable to get through to the Western Legion for now, and I've already sent someone to investigate. No, I have to go and see what's going on for myself. Please rest assured, Six Master Tang. I'll head over to stop them right away. Uguanzi was so enraged that he felt like he was about to go insane. Deserting a battlefield was a crime punishable by death. Never did he think that the Western Legion would decide to retreat at a time like this. It was clear that they had already given up on their encampment and were gathering behind it. Thus, Uguanzi and Chen Zinji rushed out of the control center together before heading directly toward the Western Legion. Dong Zian was currently in his military uniform, standing on the shoulder of an imposing red mecha. This was his divine grade mecha, and it was renowned for its wolf-like appearance, as well as its incredible speed. The mecha had been named Fierce Wolf after his martial soul, and he was currently appraising the unfolding scene with a smug smile on his face. Uguanzi and the others had definitely already noticed the situation, and he was essentially forcing them into using eternal heaven. He wasn't actually planning to retreat. He was very familiar with military laws. The Blood God Legion was currently still at least six to seven hours away from reaching them, and that was sufficient time for them to reoccupy the encampment. Everything he was doing now was according to Kiang Yu Dongfang's suggestion, which was to feign retreat to force the Tang Sect and Shrek Academy into using Eternal Heaven as quickly as possible. Chapter 1797, Dire Crisis. Right at this moment, Dong Zian sensed something and cast his gaze toward a certain direction, upon which he caught sight of two figures flying rapidly toward him. He was already prepared for this, and he patted the fierce wolf mecha beneath him, upon which it swiveled around and flew toward the two approaching figures. Dong Zian. What the hell are you doing? Who gave you the authorization to prepare for a retreat? Even before Uguanzi had arrived, his enraged voice was already clearly audible. In the next instant, he and Chen Zinji arrived before Dong Zian. What are you talking about? Commander, when did I say I was going to retreat? Dong Zian said with a surprised expression. What did you say? If you're not retreating, then what are your men doing? Uguanzi roared in a furious voice as he pointed in the direction of the Western Legion. Dong Zian put on a pained expression and sighed. Commander, you can see that there's no way for us to oppose this Blood River God Slayer array. However, rest assured, our Western Legion has no intention of deserting the battlefield. We're merely preparing to retreat as we fight. Otherwise, if we stubbornly stand our ground, we'll just be swallowed up by the array. Of course, if Eternal Heaven can be ready before the array reaches us, then we'll immediately return to the encampment. Not a single soldier from our Western Legion will desert this battlefield. That is our duty as soldiers. Fuck off. The Blood God Legion is still at least a night away from reaching your legion. Even if you're going to retreat as you fight, you can only do that after you receive the order from me. Without my orders, who allowed you to retreat out of your encampment? Uguanzi interrogated. For some reason, Dong Zian was struck by a sense of pleasure at the sight of Dong Zian's enraged display. Commander, let's lay all the cards on the table. Our Shrek Academy and the Tang Sect targeting us, and the Spirit Pagoda by refusing to use Eternal Heaven. I'm sure you know better than I do whether that's the case. Right now, only Eternal Heaven can break open that array. Yet you're allowing them to stall for time. Are the lives of my brothers worthless in your eyes? I'm not going to retreat, but you can tell the Tang Sect and Shrek Academy that we'll bow out of this battle if they don't deploy Eternal Heaven. You. Uguanzi was so enraged that he didn't even know what to say anymore. I can assure you that Shrek Academy and the Tang Sect aren't intentionally stalling the time. Chen Zinji said. Dong Zian turned toward him with a derisive look. You're assuring me, if it weren't for you, Eternal Heaven would still be under the Federation's control, and none of this would even be
He asked urgently as he picked up his sulking indicator. Right at this moment, a series of figures rushed into the encampment from the opening in the defensive line before going on a reckless spree of destruction. They were led by a giant cow-like creature that was over 100 meters in length with a pair of massive sharp horns on its head. The horns were around 50 meters in length, and even the aloe walls were unable to put up any meaningful resistance against the gigantic creature. Dong Zian's heart instantly sank into a glacial pit on seeing this, and his mind went completely blank. How did this happen? Didn't they still have several hours before the Blood River God Slayer array was projected to arrive? All of a sudden, he realized that he had made a fatal error. His selfishness and cynicism had blinded him from a very important fact, which was that the Blood River God Slayer array was completely sealed off from them, but it could be opened up at any time for the Abyssal army. He didn't know these Abyssal creatures avoided the detection of all of the surveillance soul tools to infiltrate the Western Legion's encampment, but it was clear that this surprise attack had been planned in advance, and it was specifically targeting him. Uguanzi and Chenzenji were also astonished to see this. If it weren't for the drastic turn in Dong Zian's expression, they would even be suspecting him of betraying the Federation. Fuck. Return to the encampment right away to oppose the Abyssal creatures. Hurry. Dong Zian roared as an opening appeared on his fierce wolf mecha, which he immediately leapt into. The mecha then shot forth as a streak of piercing light directly toward the Western Legion's encampment. Regardless of whether Dong Zian was selfish or not, he was a true soldier, and the fact that he had climbed all the way to this point from the bottom was a clear testament to his power, as well as his pride and determination. It was true that he hadn't actually intended to retreat, but it was too late to regret the decision. All he could do now was give everything he had to limit the consequences of his brave error. Thus, Dong Zian rushed straight toward the encampment like a madman, and at this point, the Western Legion was in complete disarray. Among the group of powerful beings from the Spirit Pagoda that were also feigning retreat, Pyangi Dongfang was looking on with a horrified expression. Was this a coincidence? How could there be such an unfortunate coincidence? He was the one who had proposed feigning retreat, and Dong Zian had heeded his suggestion. But right after they had vacated the encampment, the Abyssal Army arrived. Wasn't the timing a little too ridiculous for this to be a coincidence? Kayangi Dongfang's first thought was that there had to be a rat. There had to be someone from the Holy Spirit cult who had infiltrated the Western Legion or the Spirit Pagoda. Just like Dong Zian, regardless of how selfish he was, he didn't want the continent to be destroyed. Who was it? Who was the rat? He turned toward the people beside him with a vicious gaze, but didn't discover anything. Everyone else was currently looking back at him, and he yelled, Let's go and face the enemy together with the Western Legion. He had no other choice. At a time like this, the only option was to fight, even if it meant risking his life. He raised up his only arm to summon his coiling dragon staff, then led the way toward the opening in the defensive line. A dragon's roar rang out beside him, and Gyuna appeared with her silver dragon spear in her grasp as she released her suit of four-word battle armor. As she released her incredibly beautiful suit of silver battle armor, she couldn't help but cast her gaze toward the distance, in the direction where he was. Willine, the name of my four-word battle armor is Silver Dragon Dancing Kilin. I am Silver Dragon Dancing Kilin Gyuna. As expected of an elite legion, even in the face of such a drastic turn of events, the Western Legion was able to quickly rally itself, and the Mega Squadrons were the first to fly toward the opening in the defensive line. The entire legion quickly returned. Led by Dong Zian, and the speed of his divine grade mecha allowed him to virtually instantly reach the opening. Chapter 1798. Evil Sickle. Looking down from above, he finally knew where these enemies had come from. Not far away from the Western Legion's encampment, a massive hole had appeared in the ground, and abyssal creatures were gushing out of the hole like a volcanic eruption. It was clear that they had buried their way here underground. As for how they had managed to disguise their auras and escape the detection of the surveillance soul tools, that was no longer important. The important thing was to think about how to stop these abyssal creatures. Right at this moment, a humanoid abyssal creature sprang up from below, rushing directly toward Dong Zian. It was actually a stretch to say that this creature was humanoid in form. It did have a head and four limbs, but its front limbs were completely different from those of a human. They were a pair of giant sickle like blades that were shimmering with yellow light, and this creature was around five meters tall. It had a pair of extremely thin wings on its back, but its speed was astounding, and it almost instantly reached Dong Zian's mecha before lashing out with its front limbs. Dong Zian was a seasoned combatant on the battlefield, and his mecha immediately swerved to the side. At the same time, it raised its front paws to unleash several dozens of claw projections like lightning, forming a net of death that swept toward the enemy. However, the enemy was simply far too fast, even more so than Dong Zian's divine grade mecha. Its body began to rotate in the air like a spinning top, and its front limbs shredded the huge net like lightning while leaving trails of after images in their wake. In the next instant, it had already arrived right in front of the fierce wolf mecha. The mecha tumbled to the side while crossing its front paws in front of its chest to protect itself, then opened its mouth to let loose a burst of invisible sound waves. The abyssal creatures abruptly stopped in its tracks and shuddered as if it had been electrocuted, and in the next instant, Dong Zian's mecha ran into it in a vicious manner. Boom. The abyssal creature was sent flying through the air, but at the same time, it flashed in midair and suddenly vanished on the spot. What a powerful abyssal creature! Dong Zian could clearly sense that his assailant was still inferior to him in power, but its speed was superior to that of even his fierce wolf mecha. An abyssal creature like that would be the bane of all normal mechas. In the meantime, the battle down below had already completely unfolded. The abyssal creatures were led by over thirty of those massive cowlike creatures, all of which had giant horns and were covered in extremely thick scales. Normal soul lasers and soul artillery shells couldn't even get them to pause for an instant, and their defensive prowess may have been lacking compared with guardian longhorn beetles. But they were far superior when it came to destructive capabilities. The main difference between them and guardian longhorn beetles was their inability to fly. These abyssal creatures were known as abyssal mammoths, and they were the most fierce charging units of the abyssal plane. During the disaster brought on by the abyssal plane six thousand years ago, the abyssal mammoths had been too powerful to enter through the abyssal passageway. So this was the first time they had appeared on the Dulawa Plain. Abyssal mammoths resided on the 13th level of the abyss, and their population was relatively small, but they possessed outstanding offensive and defensive prowess, making them one of the most important battle units of the Abyssal Plain. As for the Abyssal creature that had just attacked Dong Zian, that was known as an Abyssal Evil Sickle, and it was even more powerful than an Abyssal Mammoth. Abyssal Evil Sickles resided on the 5th level of the abyss, and they were one of the most fearsome species of Abyssal creatures. They had mastery over spatial laws and were extremely adept in killing. Furthermore, they were loyal to a fault to the Holy Lord, and they were referred to as the Abyssal Enforcers. Each and every Abyssal Evil Sickle possessed powers comparable or superior to human titled Dulios, and that alone was sufficient testament to how fearsome they were. Both Abyssal Mammoths and Abyssal Evil Sickles were among the top tier in the Abyssal Plain, and it was the first time both had appeared on the Dulawa Plain. Leading the resistance was the Mecha Corps of the Western Legion, which was comprised of over 1, Mechas. These mechas were led by black mechas that were piloted by the individual mecha squadron commanders, and they were unleashing all types of soul lasers and artillery shells. Right at this moment, a series of figures appeared beside them like the wind. The abyssal evil sickles were each over five meters tall, and even though that was still quite small compared with the opposing mechas, their speed and power were unmatched. They were so fast that the naked eye could barely track them, and in the mere blink of an eye, a mecha had been sliced in half before tumbling out of the sky. Over thirty of these abyssal evil sickles appeared in midair, and mechas came falling out of the sky like dumplings in their wake. On the ground below, the abyssal mammoths were bulldozing through the encampment, but they weren't actually the ones causing the most damage. Instead, the honor belonged to the subsidiary race that accompanied them, the abyssal praying mantises. These abyssal praying mantises were slightly similar in appearance to normal praying mantises, but were completely different at the same time. The praying
Immediately thereafter, the silver light expanded to encompass a huge surrounding area. The evil sigil was struck by a sense of foreboding, and it immediately attempted to flee into space, only to discover that the surrounding space had been completely sealed. A silver armored woman then appeared before it and glanced at it with a frosty expression. In the next instant, countless spear projections surged forth. The evil sigil abruptly pulled back, then lashed out like lightning with its front limbs over 100 times in rapid succession, creating a storm of attacks. Dark yellow light was shimmering on its front limbs, refracting all light to prevent one from being able to clearly descend the trajectories of its attacks. Unfortunately, its opponent was simply far too powerful. The air around it suddenly seemed to have turned into its enemy, causing its front limbs to falter abruptly. In the next instant, the air exploded, compressing its body to the point that it was immobilized. Silver light flashed, and the shimmering silver spear plunged through its chest. The evil sigil's body immediately exploded as it attempted to flee as a cloud of yellow mist. For abyssal creatures of their level, they could infuse their consciousness and soul into the abyssal energy that they disintegrated into, thereby allowing them to retain their memories and will following resurrection. Unfortunately, it was facing the silver dragon spear. Chapter 1799, silver dragon seal. The spear swished through the air, and a silver vortex shaped to instantly devour this cloud of yellow mist, leaving no trace behind. The only thing that changed was that the silver light radiating from Guyuna's suit of forward battle armor had become even brighter. Guyuna flapped her right dragon wing, sending her spinning off to the side in mid-air to evade the attacks from two evil sickles. At the same time, a peculiar hexagram appeared beneath her feet, and each point on the hexagram was a different color, namely blue for water elements, azure for wind elements, yellow for earth elements, silver for spatial elements, and gold for light elements. Rise up, six elements, silver dragon seal. Guyuna's cold voice rang out, and in the next instant, the entire sky walked violently. A giant silver dragon slowly appeared behind her. This was a silver dragon that was over a kilometer in length. The attention of virtually everyone on the battlefield was instantly drawn to the gigantic silver dragon, and right after it appeared, Guyuna raised her silver dragon spear high up into the air. In the next instant, the silver dragon abruptly disintegrated into streaks of dazzling silver light that descended from above, crashing into the Western Legion's encampment like a meteor shower. Boom, 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 boom. It was as if another carpet bombing had been initiated. Each streak of silver light was like a small silver dragon that was imbued with the power of the six elements. And not only were they extraordinarily fast, they tracked down one abyssal creature after another with unerring accuracy, as if they had eyes of their own. As soon as they came into contact with the abyssal creatures, explosions would be set off in small areas to reduce the abyssal creatures to gray energy. What was even more remarkable was that after exploding, the streaks of silver light would form six colored vortexes that latched onto the abyssal energy to prevent them from escaping. In what seemed like no more than the blink of an eye, over three thousand abyssal creatures of all descriptions had perished to her silver dragon seal. Meanwhile, Kyangi Dongfang had just destroyed an abyssal evil sickle with a staff strike, and he immediately turned toward Yuyuna with astonishment in his eyes. His astonishment arose from the discovery that Yuyuna was already a quasi god. Only a quasi god could be capable of unleashing such a powerful attack in an instant. How was this possible? Kyangi Dongfang was completely stunned. The entire Kyangyu family had arrived on the northern front of this battle, but even Kyangyu Diding had failed to identify the fact that Guyuna was already a quasi god. Prior to this, Kyangyu Dongfang was already speculating whether Guyuna had reached the limit Dulu level, but never did he think that she would have surpassed him already. Could it be that there was some type of secret hidden in the Myriad Beast plane? That was the first thought that occurred to him. Otherwise, how had she reached this level at such a young age? Tang Walin was already a once in a generation talent, but he wasn't even a limit Dulu yet. The Silver Dragon Seal unleashed by Guyuna finally arrested the seemingly unstoppable momentum of the Abyssal Army, and only now was the Western Legion able to actively retaliate. Guyuna's Silver Dragon Spear was like a feeding whale, devouring all of the Abyssal energy that had been controlled by her Silver Dragon Seal. The battle down below had already reached white hot intensity, and the Abyssal creatures were not just killing human troops; they were also working to cause as much destruction as possible. Only a short time had passed since the opening on the defensive line had appeared, and a very large section of the Western Legion's encampment was already in shambles. All of the powerful beings of the Spirit Pagoda had joined the battle, and they were primarily targeting the Abyssal Evil Sickles, managing to just barely keep them at bay. Right at this moment, a sinister voice rang out across the entire sky. Long time no see, brother Kyangyu. Thank you for the news you passed on to us. Without that, we wouldn't have been able to seize this fantastic opportunity. How about we join forces and kill everyone here? As you can see, the Blood River Godslayer array has already taken shape. This is a golden opportunity for all of us to attain godhood. A giant skull that was glowing with eerie green light slowly rose up from the hole in the ground, and atop the skull sat none other than Ghost Emperor. As soon as he appeared, the souls of the recently deceased Western Legion soldiers immediately flew toward him as a series of green vengeful spirits to be devoured by the giant skull. A look of enjoyment appeared on Ghost Emperor's face. Mm, fresh souls are always the most delicious. Why don't you join me for this meal, brother Kyangyu? Your lies aren't going to convince anyone here. Ghost Emperor, one of us has to die here today. Kyangyu Dongfang roared. Even though Dong Zian was aware that Ghost Emperor was intentionally sowing dissension with his words, he still couldn't help but turn toward Kyangyu Dongfang with a vicious expression. If he hadn't heeded Kyangyu Dongfang's advice to feign retreat, there was no way that the enemy would have been able to infiltrate their encampment. However, no amount of regret was going to change anything. All he could do now was oppose the enemies with all his might. Kyangyu Diding flew over from the side and cast an intense gaze toward Ghost Emperor. It's been a while, Ghost Emperor. Do you take pride in bullying juniors? How about you face me instead? Only one of us is going to leave this battlefield alive today. Kyangyu Diding was remarkably calm in this situation. Ever since the Spirit Pagoda was forced to bow to the Tang Sect in Shrek Academy, he had let go of the reins and completely handed control over to Kyangyu Dongfang. As for Kyangyu Dongfang's brother, Kyangyu Kingfeng, he was banished from the Kyangyu family, and no one knew where he had gone. Kyangyu Diding's objective was very simple. Simple, to ensure that the bloodline of the Kyangyu family could continue to be passed down, Shrek Academy and the Tang Sect had already made a resurgence, and Kyangyu Diding was actually very confident that the human army would secure victory in this battle. The Kyangyu family possessed several divine tools, and one of the most important ones had always been in Kyangyu Diding's possession. It was a divine tool that was passed down from family leader to family leader, and only when the previous family leader passed away was the divine tool given to the next family leader. This divine tool didn't possess any offensive or defensive abilities, but it had the ability of clairvoyance. It was a divination divine tool. Back when the reconstruction of Shrek City had first begun, Kyangyu Diding had received a premonition from the divine tool, and that premonition had been growing stronger day after day since then. Right before the powerful beings of the Tang Sect and Shrek Academy stormed the Spirit Pagoda, he conducted one final divination, and the outcome was that only one branch of the Kyangyu family would survive to preserve the bloodline. At that point, he understood that the Kyangyu family was very likely going to face a major tribulation, but the tribulation wouldn't be enough to completely wipe out the entire family. Thus, he banished Kyangyu Kingfeng. As the family leader, he had to stay with the Kyangyu family, and that divination divine tool had also been taken by Kyangyu Kingfeng. Even now, Kyangyu Dongfang remains completely oblivious to all of this. Not long ago, Kyangyu Kingfeng had sent Kyangyu Diding one final message. He had expended some of his own life force to conduct another divination, and the outcome was that there was a chance for the Kyangyu family's fate to turn. However, they would have to do everything in their power to do good deeds and accumulate good karma. Kyangyu Diding had never believed in fate as the essence of the coiling dragon staff was to defy fate and the natural order. However, recently, he suddenly understood that karma was unavoidable. The Shrek City bombing had been caused by his branch of the Kyangyu
he roared as he shot directly toward Ghost Emperor like lightning. Thus, the clash between the two quasi gods commenced, and the Abyssal army was also unleashing a full frontal attack. A figure appeared silently beside Buna, completely out of thin air, giving off no detectable aura. On the surface, it didn't look much different from a normal evil sickle. In fact, it was slightly shorter, standing only around three meters tall, which was around the same height as Buna in her battle armor. However, this evil sickle's front limbs were a bright yellow color instead of dark yellow, and they struck the dragon wings on Buna's back like lightning. Even with Buna's incredible powers, she didn't manage to detect it prior to being struck. However, it was also right at this moment that another figure appeared behind her, and a pair of strong hands grabbed onto the peerlessly sharp front limbs of the evil sickle with unerring accuracy. This was a handsome middle-aged man, and as he closed his hands around the pair of sickles, a terrifying aura erupted out of his body. Up close, it could be seen that not only did this evil sickle's body resemble that of a human, it also possessed a very handsome human face. It was very surprised to see its own sickles being caught, and at the same time, it detected the aura of the middle-aged man. You're a human. Wait, no, you're not. Its voice was very low and was only audible in a small area. Immediately thereafter, a powerful shockwave erupted between the two, and the middle-aged man only swayed slightly on the spot, while the evil sickle was sent flying back like a cannonball. In the next instant, it abruptly vanished into thin air. The middle-aged raised his hands to inspect his palms, which were covered in dark golden scales, but all of those scales had been sliced apart. That creature's front limbs are comparable to divine weapons, and it possesses quasi-god level power. It's most likely the ruler of this abyssal race. After that, he also vanished into thin air, and throughout this entire process, Yuna didn't even turn around once as she continued to devour the abyssal energy in the air with her silver dragon spear. Indeed, her assailant had been none other than the ruler of the evil sickle race, the sickle sovereign. This was one of the top five sovereigns in the entire abyssal plane, and even the black sovereign and the hornet sovereign combined may not be a match for it. However, it had been stopped cold in its tracks by the middle-aged man who had just appeared behind Yuna. Yuna's eyes narrowed slightly as she waved her silver dragon spear through the air, and another hexagram appeared. However, this hexagram was different from the previous one in that it was entirely of a dazzling silver color. The radiant silver light was constantly changing in an unpredictable fashion, and in the next instant, everything in the surrounding area suddenly stood still for a moment. Spatial lock. As a result, all of the evil sickles that were rapidly traversing through space were forced to emerge onto the battlefield. Through her incredible control over the elements, Yuna had sealed this entire area, ridding them of their ability to traverse through space. Thus, the evil sickles were going to be far less effective in battle. However, it was also right at this moment that a group of figures rose up into the air from down below. Among them, there were five giving off particularly powerful auras, and they were led by a man who was wearing a long robe. As soon as he appeared, the entire sky began to tremor violently, and even Yuna's spatial lock instantly crumbled. Yuna's expression changed slightly at the sight of this man. He was already infinitely approaching the godly level. Furthermore, she could tell from his aura that he was an abyssal being rather than an evil soul master. The man's robes were of a lavish golden color, and he looked no different from a normal handsome human. In fact, he bore some resemblance to Tang Wuling. He wore a huge golden cape on his back, and even though he was only hovering in the air, he had instantly become the center of everyone's attention. Who was this man? How interesting. Is this the world of humans? What refreshing life energy. He took a deep breath through his nose, and he seemed to be thoroughly enjoying himself. In the next instant, his gaze fell upon Yuna. Humans really are interesting creatures. I can detect a special scent from you, and I really like it. How about you pledge your loyalty to me and become my servant? His voice was very pleasant and irresistibly alluring. Even some of the powerful beings of the spirit pagoda were becoming more sluggish upon hearing this voice, and the soldiers of the Western Legion were even more heavily affected. Even the abyssal creatures were affected by this man's presence, and many of them couldn't help but go down onto the ground, where they lay in a completely motionless manner. This was a clear indication of just how lofty this man's status in the abyssal plane was. Kyangu dying and Ghost Emperor temporarily ceased in their battle, and the former was also astonished by the sight of the golden robed man. Was the planar ruler of the Dulu continent already so feeble that even an abyssal creature of this caliber could arrive on this plane? Keep dreaming. Yuna scoffed as she raised her head with a derisive look in her eyes. Hmm. The golden robed man's brows furrowed slightly, and the entire sky seemed to have suddenly congealed. All of the humans present plummeted involuntarily out of midair, and only after making some panicked adjustments were they just barely able to steady themselves. What incredible spiritual power! Even those who weren't directly targeted by it were impacted so severely. One could only imagine how much pressure Yuna was under. In spite of this, Yuna remained completely still on the spot, and his pupils suddenly turned vertical as an invisible flash took place, upon which both of them swayed slightly in an unsteady manner. To everyone's surprise, she hadn't been forced onto the back foot. Hmm. The golden robed man was clearly astonished to see this. It had not been an easy task for him to arrive on the dual plane, and a vast amount of resources and energy had to be expended. One of the most important conditions that the abyssal plane raised in exchange for helping the Holy Spirit cult set up the Blood River God Slayer array was that the Holy Spirit cult had to use the array to attack the natural order of the dual plane, thereby allowing him to descend into this world. Never did he think that he would encounter an opponent with spiritual power that wasn't inferior to his as soon as he arrived in this world. One had to realize that he was at the divine origin realm, even though he only had reached an elementary stage of the divine origin realm. This was still a realm that was only supposed to have been reached by the gods. Thanks so much for watching this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Also, leave a comment down below with suggestions on what novels to read.